rocks reporting from down under. So as you can see from here, uh, things have really uh, calmed down in the Arctic. Uh, the storm has, is dying out. There's still wind speeds, what, 32 uh, kilometers per hour, 33, uh, yeah, 28. And let's just briefly have a look at the um, the air pressure. Uh, so a thousand and one hectopascals, nine hundred and ninety four. Um, yeah, nine hundred and ninety nine. Uh, and it's all kind of centered around. Uh, oh, wait a minute, let's have a look. Uh, Yeah, <laughs> we lost the colour. So, but it's all centred around again around the uh, Canadian archipelago. Uh, but we can't really see what's happening uh, there because of cloud. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to have a look at what uh, the uh, the U.S. Navy site is back up, and we can have a look at what they are saying. And then we'll have a look at NASA Worldview, which is uh, uh, perhaps the most instructive of the lot. Well, after three days of being down, the uh, US Navy site is back up again, so we can uh, uh, look at their uh, data. So let's have a look at ice thickness first. Okay, so this is what it shows. Uh, uh, so, you know, kind of about half to one meter thick, and then I'm not quite sure we've got this area. Um, perhaps the wind has been um, blowing all the ice uh, against the uh, Canadian archipelago. Um, and of course, uh, the winds have died down quite a bit, but this is where it's all centred today. So we'll just have a look uh, to see how that uh, eventuates. So let's just have a look at how it looks over the last uh, uh, 30 days. So that only goes to the 25th. Uh, it's the 26th today. So I think we might have to wait for a couple of days to get the, the true kind of uh, uh, data on this. Uh, so I'm not sure this may, this is uh, the uh, sea ice uh, concentration. Uh, you can see it's not looking terribly flash. Um, and let's just have a look at how it looks over the last 30 days. That goes from the beginning of the month to the 25th, which is the latest data. Uh, I'd love to be able to slow this down a wee bit. I'd have to work out how to do that. Um, so that's what the data shows. Uh, I suspect as far as this data is concerned that what they've got as the 25th is actually a forecast. Uh, it's not an actual reading. Um, so we'll see in the next couple of days. Uh, but what you see next from NASA Worldview is the real indicator because that's uh, that's real data. So we finally have um, some a view of the Arctic that's clear enough to show what has happened uh, after the cyclone and these areas in green which are used to measure um, 
sea ice temperature uh, depend on areas which are free of cloud. So we can see kind of the areas um, which are free of cloud. So let's just turn that off. And here goes the south, so the North Pole. So let's, you can see all this, this area here is completely, completely changed. Uh, so let's just uh, go in and have a look. So this is the South Pole here, and we've probably got, I don't know, a, a hundred, two hundred kilometers or something before, before uh, this is what we see. So this is what it looks like really close to the pole. And you can see all the ice is starting to break up. If we go a bit further, it's even more obvious. So let's just have a look. Uh, I'm going to go in and out because the uh, you, you lose the focus. Uh, so let's just keep on going out. And I don't think these are milk ponds. I think this is uh, areas where the uh, the ice is completely uh, melted. So, and once you get that, well, who knows? Let's see what happens in the next few weeks. But that's a pretty serious breakdown of the ice and that's pretty much as I uh, would have expected after this storm. So we're on the edge of the cloud here uh, and yeah I'm just not quite sure where we are in terms of our latitude. Oh yeah, so that so all of this, all of this is uh, within eighty degrees uh, north. Now just look at this. So uh, that gives you a pretty uh, good feeling of uh, what's happening uh, to the ice, large areas. Okay, we'll just uh, go back in. So that's a very, very wide area. This is completely broken down. This is starting to break down and we don't know what's happening elsewhere because it's all under cloud. Uh, and I'm not going to go into all the areas around the edge. I'm more concerned with the central Arctic basin. So um, there, we, there we are on the uh, 26th of August 2019 after the, uh, the great Arctic cyclone pointing your attention to this uh, article uh, that was published uh, two days ago by Sam Kurana of the Arctic News blog. He did something on the cyclone of the Arctic Ocean. Um, it's of interest because coverage of this is as rare as hen's teeth. So um, yeah, he goes into the Arctic, Arctic warming um, and what it means. So he's saying uh, that we could be crossing the two degrees centigrade guardrail this year, i.e. the threshold that was too dangerous to be crossed. And then he says, what is the danger? Arctic heating is accelerating as the image at the top shows, and this could mean global temperatures skyrocket in a matter of years. Where Arctic ice, sea ice disappears, hot water emerges due to albedo changes and the loss of the buffer that has now been consuming heat as part of the melting process. This is illustrated by the 
image below showing the sea surface temperature difference between 1961 to 1990 in the Arctic latitude 60 degrees north to 90 degrees north on the uh, August 23rd, 2019. So that's of uh, great interest. And then he says, disappearance of sea ice, Arctic sea ice comes with numerous feedbacks that further feed up, speed up the warming. Um, heat waves can strongly heat up the water that gets carried by rivers into the Arctic Ocean. We've seen that. As the image below shows, the water was as hot as 10 degrees Celsius at the Green Circle on August the 20th, 2019, i.e. 9.4 degrees Celsius hotter than 1981 to 2011. As the Arctic is heating up faster than the rest of the world, the jet stream gets more and more distorted. A cyclone is forecast over the Arctic Ocean for August 24th, pulling hot air over the Arctic Ocean, resulting in temperatures at the green circle as high as 10.4 degrees Celsius or 50.6 degrees Fahrenheit at 1,000 hectopascals and 7.4 degrees Celsius or 45 degrees at surface level as the image below uh, sh shows. And he shows the distortion of the, uh, the jet stream moving over the Arctic Ocean. So we've been looking at all of this um, over several days. So, uh, and he's said, pointed out exactly what I've said. The Arctic sea ice is very thin and vulnerable at the moment. The cyclone also looks set to batter the sea ice at a time when huge amounts of ocean heat are entering the Arctic Ocean uh, from the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. More ocean heat looks set to be on the way. As the image below shows, uh, sea surface temperatures around North America were as high as 33 degrees Celsius on August the, uh, 21st, 2019. So the image below shows the worrying rise of Northern Hemisphere sea surface temperature anomalies from the 20th century average with the added trend illustrating the danger that this rise will lead to Arctic sea ice collapse and larger methane emissions from the seafloor of the Arctic Ocean, further accelerating the temperature rise. So, uh, yeah, so that's from Sam Karana. This tweet uh, from Scott from Auckland, uh, Scotland. The heat will migrate north through Scandinavia into the Arctic this week while cooler air digs into Western Europe. Well, I'm not really that interested in what happens to um, Western Europe, I'm sorry. I'm more interested in the Arctic, so let's just have a look. Yeah, you can see, look, it's all going north into the Arctic. So, uh, with the breakup of ice due to a storm followed by uh, hot conditions in the Arctic, uh, well, it's anybody's uh, guess. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, this is me, Seymour Rocks, uh, reporting from Down Under.